Hey everyone, welcome back to the Resilient Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron, your host, and I have the joy of serving as a campus pastor at Friends Church Eastvale. And today uh, I'm really excited. I'm joined again by Katie, our co-host, who is our campus operations director and director of spiritual formation. And so Katie, thanks again for being with us today. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me back. Today, I am very excited uh, to join, uh, have with us Dr. Felicia Wu Song. Uh, Dr. Song is a cultural sociologist of media and technology and is serving as a professor of sociology at Westmont College in Santa Barbara. Her books include Virtual Communities, Bowling Alone Online Together, and recently she wrote a book called Restless Devices, Recovering Personhood, Presence, and Place in the Digital Age. And I got to say, um, I recommend this book highly. Uh, I read it word for word, uh, it prayerfully, thoughtfully, and it really impacted my life. And so if you're looking for a good summer read, we want to recommend this book to everyone listening. It's a fantastic book. And so Felicia, thank you for joining us today. We're honored to have you with us. Thank you. It's so great to be with you both. I know you're on um, official summer vacation, so congratulations on a year of teaching and, Thank you. and now some time to, to rest up. Yeah, thanks so much. It's, it's uh, a beautiful thing to have the luxury of academic seasons. <laughs> totally. So I'm thankful for it. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> well, um, I read your book. It's fantastic. And I'd just love to know a little bit about you and a little bit of your story. And um, would you kind of help uh, our listeners and us know kind of a little bit of your journey and then what got you interested in this topic of digital media and what drew you to this, this field of study? Yeah, sure. So, um, I live in California now, but I'm actually an East coaster. I was born and raised in New Jersey. Um, uh, my parents immigrated there from Taiwan back mm -hmm. in the early seventies. Um, so I'm a New Jersey girl, grew up in the eighties, Bruce Springsteen, John Bon Jovi, all that stuff. <laughs> I know I'm really dating myself now. Um, no, actually but, I love in, in the, um, in the book, you had all these yeah. cultural references and it just resonated. Yeah. It was so personal because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Gen Xer as well. And I'm like, yes, I love this. So it was great. Yeah. Right on. So, um, yeah, I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey and, um, was raised in a Christian family. Um, my parents um, and my brother and I attended a Chinese church that was built up by other immigrants. Um, and then when I went off to college, um, joined InterVarsity mm. uh, Christian Fellowship, which was super impactful to me. Um, and wandered around and finding my major, uh, for like many other undergraduates, ended up in history. Um, but um, by and by, um, after graduation, find my, found my way to sociology through mass communications. And so much of it was actually um, completely driven by this interest in media and technology. Uh, it, it came up um, after college, after two things. Um, the first thing that happened was that I was teaching at a private school. Um, I was teaching history. And again, I'm going to date myself here. It was the first year at this private school, boarding school, where they introduced email wow. to the students and wow. the staff. Mm -hmm. And it was this big thing that no one talked about. <laughs> like they just gave us these accounts and there was no community conversation mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. which was super interesting and strange to me because it was a school that talked about community a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I started wondering, what is this thing that's happening to us in this institution that I was in, but also in our country where we adopt media and technologies so frequently with no conversation, with no kind of collective. Wow. Um, and that was just really, I don't know, it was super interesting. And, and I was really curious about what that, what that was about. Cause we debate about all these other things yep. in our society, yep. but we don't debate about this. Yep. And so I ended up reading a book by Neil Postman yep. called Amusing Ourselves to Death, which yep. I know many other folks have had the chance to read. And it just blew my mind. I didn't know people studied media, talked about media and technology. And so then I thought, wow, I can actually go and study this. Yep. There are really wonderful thinkers that are um, um, writing books that normal people can read, <laughs> um, like, like me right after college. And so I was just so impacted by that book um, that I thought, oh, I, I want to do something like this. Um, and so that, that kind of started, started my way. Wow. 
What was the name of that Neil Postman book? I'm just curious. I would love to read it myself. What was the, do you remember the title? Yeah, it was Amusing Ourselves to Death. Okay, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you know, he, he was writing pre, pre-digital. pre Yeah. He was talking about television, yeah. actually. And he was talking about the impact of television on wow. democracy, of all things. Wow. And mm-hmm. so it's kind of a wild read nowadays yeah. um, because it's like, it's so prescient. Wow. Um, and it was only about television. And it's like, oh man, we've like driven way down the road and taken a left turn and driven off the cliff compared to where he was. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, back how, in the how 80s. prophetic. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. prophetic. I know, yeah. um, well, thank you for sharing uh, that. And, and amazing, when I was at Biola, when I, where I went to school for my MDiv, uh, they had this thing called Bubs. And it was like this kind of pre-Facebook kind of community where you would post okay. things, kind of like Craigslist is a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. When they introduced email, was there something like that as well? That they, it was a, like, a, there were, were there forums and that kind of a thing? Or was it just strictly mm. email? I'm just curious. Mm. Yeah, no, it was just email. Um, and so, yeah, there wasn't any other extra forums that created these other collective spaces. Yeah. Um, but it was just super interesting to watch these 14 to 18 year old girls. It was an all girls boarding school. Just like the dynamic of how they related to each other, how mm-hmm. they spent their time really started to shift. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was super interesting just to watch and kind of wonder about like, Hey, what's, what does this mean, um, for Mm -hmm. these, uh, young girls that are, that are coming of age and what does it mean for the school? Oh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On page 13 in your book, you mentioned a few reasons for writing it and you've kind of shared a little bit about your journey and and the personal side of it. Um, but can you share kind of what led you to write this particular book on, on, on the rest? I love the title restless devices. Um, and, and what kind of shaped your assumptions in writing the book? Yeah. Um, so what's been really nice about, um, pursuing graduate work and then starting to get involved as, um, in, in just the scholarship of, of studying digital technologies is that I've had the opportunity to speak to different churches or, um, university groups, um, and communities about how we live with our technologies. And what was very interesting was that after every talk, um, it felt like I was having the same Q and A sessions and having the same after talk conversations with people Mm. um, who came up. And I was hearing the same stories Mm. about whether um, they were frustrated about their own technological demands that they felt on their life or they were concerned about how to raise their kids um, and what was happening um, in their in their children's lives Um, and it was the same stories right and it was sort of like oh man everyone's struggling Mm -hmm. with the same thing everyone's tired everyone has no idea what to do Mm -hmm. Um, and we're just kind of all stuck on this crazy making train Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. just flying (laughs) it's just (laughs) flying down the railway right um, and so, I, you know, I, like I mentioned earlier, I've always wanted to write for a more general audience. And so um, when I finally got the chance to come to teach at Westmont, a Christian college where I knew I could write a book like this and have it valued yeah. um, as part of my job, um, mm-hmm. one that both did the sociology and the theology, which is what I really wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, It gave me time and space um, and permission, really, um, to pursue writing this book that really came out of conversations Mm -hmm. um, with people after these talks. And also, I've been teaching a class called Internet and Society for many years, um, and watching my students um, year to year through that um, has been uh, super helpful as well. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm probably going to date myself on the other end of things yeah. because <laughs> I don't, my life, my entire life has really been, you know, email has already existed. Now it's just ever present with TikTok and Instagram and all of these things. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in my lifetime, m- a lot of the conversation, even um, like presently, it seems like it's picking up about all the negative and similar to mm-hmm. um, like, like the yeah. people that you would talk about um, after these workshops or different teachings that you did. Right. Um, yeah. And so I, I feel like I, I have that. Um, I've kind of been following mm-hmm. that conversation, but I'm so mm-hmm. excited just for today to get, um, I've been following the conversation kind of in the secular 
secular world, but to bring in Mm -hmm. like the spiritual. But before we we get into that, what are some of the concerns that you see um, when you're considering, you know, just what what you've seen with your students or in your research Mm -hmm. that people might not even notice or know about when it comes to, Mm -hmm. you know, Google search and apps and YouTube? Yeah. Now, I love that you mentioned the the kind of environment you've kind of come Mm -hmm. into, because (laughs) Um, for me, watching it for the last 15, 20 years, it's so fascinating because for so long, nobody said anything that was <laughs> negative. I mean, everybody was just like, this is amazing. This is going to make us all like we're all going to be harmonious. We're all going to mm. be communicating with each other. We're all going to get along. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so it is really interesting that it really has been the last five six years that that conversation has started Mm -hmm. to really shift. Um, And that's just been super interesting to watch. Um, And so some of the concerns I'm interested in are are twofold. Um, One is the way in which even when we're not on our screens, a part of us is still like our consciousness, Mm -hmm. our mind, our, our emotional energy is is still kind of dedicated to whatever's happening online, yeah. right? Yeah. And we all know that because every time we walk out of a classroom or a meeting, immediately it's like we're like we're like pulling out like our our phones like from holsters, you know? We're like, yeah. Wah. Yeah. what did I miss in the last twenty? Yeah. Minutes, oh my goodness, you know? <laughs> right? Like, what's been happening? What's what been did happening? I miss? Right? And so, like, clearly, a part of our being, right, is is already constantly connected to what's going on online. Um, and, and we're never really off Mm -hmm. if we don't pay attention, right. Or if we're not intentional about creating certain kinds of boundaries to, to protect the off time. Mm -hmm. The other part of it that you mentioned with the Google searches is, is the lack of transparency really Mm -hmm. in the kinds of platforms and apps that so many of us engage in very regularly. Yeah. Um, in terms of not only the kind of data that's being gathered from us, um, but also um, the ways in which they are functioning to um, curate what we see yeah. <laughs> um, based on certain algorithms mm-hmm. and even depending on how we are responding to particular posts or, or what times we're on, right? I mean, it's just fascinating mm-hmm. yeah. the amount of genius really mm-hmm. that has gone into um, creating these um, digital platforms and spaces that know us so well, yeah. right? Yeah. They've gathered so much data on us and they mm-hmm. fine tuned so much of the content yeah. to us, like right. the YouTube recommendations. I mean, man, that yeah. stuff is good, right? Yeah. Like they yeah. know exactly they know what, what we want to watch. It is a drug, yeah. 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 yeah, and they know exactly how many seconds it takes mm-hmm. for us to just be like, oh, I'll just watch one more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's all amazing yeah. and right. brilliant, but like evil genius Scary. kind yeah. of brilliant. Yeah, even mm-hmm. this week I was <laughs> thinking I noticed um, some of my friends, I noticed, um, one of my friends had like bought a bag or something and we're like, oh, you bought the bag. And they're like, yeah, I was targeted. I'm like, that's just <laughs> such not like a, a phrase that we've been using before, wow. but we feel that you see the same ads on Google, on Instagram. They're like, wow, like I really should buy this thing because it's everywhere. Yeah. And that's yeah. just part of, or, or we know like, oh, I saw that, like you fell for it. You were targeted. <laughs> like you wow. bought the bag. Wow. I mean, it's kind of crazy that somebody would even use, that's a verb now. You yeah. know, it, uh, to, to be conscious <laughs> yeah. of the fact that somebody felt targeted on an Instagram ad or yeah. a Google ad or that's yeah. wild. I never, I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> that's, oh, that's good. Um, yeah. Felicia, I, just to go back to your idea of the, like our consciousness is on our phones, even when we're not on our phones. Like, I think mm-hmm. that was a really powerful moment uh, for me reading it. And in your book, here's a quote, you said this, indeed, um, being permanently connected means that even if our devices are not powered on, or even in our possession, our consciousness has become sufficiently trained and thoroughly immersed in the habits of mind formed by the unceasing awareness of the constantly shifting landscape of what is being said and posted in the digital realm. Mm -hmm. That's a great uh, summary because it's so true. You know, what, what do you think, what's, what's going on? 
Um, we were at Disneyland a few weeks ago and mm. I had just finished up the book. So I was kind of doing my own freedom project of trying very intentionally to not take my phone out. I, to I told my wife, Chris, yeah. I said, you're in charge of photos today. I'm not going to pull my <laughs> phone out. I want to try to That's keep impressive. that thing in the pocket. <laughs> and so I, I, didn't, I wasn't doing it. And as I'm in line for, you know, 90 minutes for Space Mountain, I'm looking mm -hmm. around and, and, and no one is looking at each other. And, oh, yeah. and they're not talking. And th your book is just like ringing out to me like, oh my, like evil genius. Like this, this yeah. there's something going on here. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, you, we, I think we're all, all aware of it, but your book brought mm -hmm. depth to the situation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. really felt like uh, this is something that we need to take very seriously. So it was, it was a really good, mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know uh, about your students. You mm -hmm. teach this class on technology at Biola. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Katie, you kind of talked about your friend and, and yeah. some of the, the comments that she made about buying this product. Uh, what do your students say? How do they feel about uh, the digital world? What's their thoughts on the future? Uh, what do you hear in the classroom when you talk mm. about this with them? Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think um, many of them echo um, what Katie mentioned earlier, that many have grown up with a lot of messaging about the negatives, mm. right? Which is a real difference from when I started teaching this class 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago when I started explaining to the students some of the downsides, it was all just kind of like, what are you talking about, lady? Um, nowadays, it's like, oh, I've already heard a lot about this already. And so it is interesting because I, I do think my students in that sense come in already like sort of buying in, mm. um, maybe a little jaded even, and like, yeah, 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 I know. Um, mm. But it goes kind of in two ways. Like there's the one student who's like, feels super guilty, you mm. know, just like, I know, I know, I know I shouldn't, but I can't stop myself. I don't know what to do, right? And then there's the other that's like, yeah, 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 I know what everyone says, but it's not me. Like I can stop whenever I want to kind of thing, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, but overall, I think everyone is, is on the same page in saying, look, my life socially, academically, work-wise, it all demands that I be online, yeah. mm -hmm. right? It's not like I can just turn it off yeah. um, or yeah. chuck it in the lake. So what am I supposed to do hmm. about that? Which I think is a legitimate point. And what's so interesting about the landscape today compared to you know back when my students first got email in that private school, right? It is so enmeshed in our relationships and our work lives and our schooling mm -hmm. that you really can't just chuck it, yeah. right? Or yeah. just be like, hey, I'm just gonna go cloister myself in a cave somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what makes it harder is that we do have yeah. to use it. And so then how yeah. do we live with it, right? Mm -hmm. In a way that it isn't, um, that, that does ha have some intention, right? So we aren't just kind of swept away by the way, by the the methods of the platforms yeah. um, and the psychological hooks that they have on us. Yeah. Wow, that word, that phrase, psychological hooks. Uh, it kind yeah. of, yeah, that, that sticks. I um, I was thinking about uh, how uh, your students, you know, kind of felt guilty, and it does seem like there's a, a morality forming and shaping yeah. around this that didn't exist yeah. before. And I almost hear totally. that. Um, yeah. yes. Is that true? I think that's very true. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I and I think in that sense, um, that's where, to me, thinking about um, trying to orient our thinking about our digital towards the positive mm. rather mm. than the negative is actually yeah. super helpful, right? Instead mm -hmm. of just like, what do I have to do to cut out this bad thing, yeah. right? Yeah, And that's super, I mean, there's an element of truth in that, that we mm -hmm. all need to evaluate seriously and become self-aware mm -hmm. um, in our own lives. But at the same time, I know in my own life, it's like, very often the negative thing isn't enough of a motivation for me to actually mm -hmm. stop, <laughs> right? Like yeah. I know I should really stop eating this bag of Doritos, <laughs> but man, it's really good. Yeah. And I'm just gonna sit here and keep eating until there's nothing left, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? Like, yeah. so I need to have something positive, mm -hmm. life generating yeah. that says, hey, no, actually there's something better 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's some other way to to proceed with whatever emotion yeah. I might have or whatever mm-hmm. mood I'm in. Yeah. Right. That that's actually more fruitful and more satisfying actually, yeah. if you give it a chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I think is super exciting. Yeah. Um, and also something that is really new. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think we know a lot about that yeah. Yeah. Um, yet. Yeah, you, it makes ahead. me think of, um, like, even your Dorito example, <laughs> like how many times I've tried to personally, like, delete Instagram or delete Facebook. <laughs> and it <laughs> kind of seems like even in, um, yeah. like, it's like to one extreme or the other, mm-hmm. or even see um, mm-hmm. people, a lot of influencers doing social media fasts or these different kind yeah. of, like, all or nothings. Mm-hmm. But then a week later, they're right. like, I'm back. And so it's like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah, right. that was probably a really good, like, rest, you know, but it's not really sustainable. And so I think totally. I love what you said about like we have to find the positive in it to create like how do we live in the mm-hmm. tension of like this is really good mm-hmm. but also can be mm-hmm. so there is some negative but just pursuing like mm-hmm. the positive side of it mm-hmm. which I think you even mm-hmm. said a lot of practical things in your book too which was super helpful. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. in 1 Corinthians 10:23 Paul says all things are lawful but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful but not mm-hmm. all things build up. And uh, I mean, that, that, that verse can be so applied to, mm. to the digital world. Mm. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Mm. And so there is this morality, I think, to this issue because we're on it so much. Before we get to, because I really want to spend some time on how the gospel shapes mm. this. And I love the word you used in the book. I think towards the end, you talked about it's not like giving up, it's independence from. It was some kind of mm. language mm-hmm. like that. And I love that mm-hmm. language of independence from mm-hmm. this issue or from this thing that we're, mm-hmm. not, we're not addicted, but we can work mm-hmm. with it. Um, but mm-hmm. before we get there, I do want to mm-hmm. just look at one negative part that, that I think was helpful for yeah. me. And that is this, this idea of the industrialization of our lives on the digital. And, and, and that, that, that chapter was very, very good, very helpful. Uh, and you had these four, four parts of industrialization that happens naturally because of it. And you, you talked about uh, quantifying everything and how we quantify um, people. You know, I post a picture and 50 people like that picture and I post another one and it gets one. And, and then how do I feel about myself because of that? Can you mm-hmm. speak into the impact mm-hmm. of the, the quantifying that has happened in our lives because of digital and, and the negativity that yeah. can come from that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, social media is so fascinating. It's, mm. it's such a funny place to do relationships. Mm. Um, and, and because um, it, it's a funny place to do relationships and also do identity um, wow. because so much of it is based on um, numbers of followers. Num- like, as you mentioned, the numbers that we get from certain um, posts or tweets. And so I think what's interesting about what happens to us when we quantify um social feedback Mm. right like anytime you put a a number on something right it becomes a metric right a metric that then you can compare with someone else right like oh that person has 5,000 and I only have 300 right Mm -hmm. Um, so I gotta work hard right to get to that 5,000 whatever it might be Um, and it's sort of I think for a lot of us it's sort of like our worst junior high memory, uh, like yeah. possible world, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to like have your popularity actually be given a number, right? right. <laughs> to be like, you're 73, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and that person's five, right? Oh. <laughs> and you walk yeah. around wearing 73, oh. right? Wow. And so I think it's it's the way in which, you know, there's there's a lot of value to quantifying, like there there there's, um, they're significant, you know, I'm a sociologist, we do statistics, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like statistics and numbers can be very powerful in showing important, ph- explaining important phenomenon that yeah. are can be quite complex. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the kinds of numbers that we get in social media, they just tend to reduce, right? They, they reduce relationships, they reduce mm-hmm. communication, they reduce identity down mm-hmm. to this yeah. one number, 
right? That then for some reason, as human beings, we just start taking cues from, right? We're like, oh gosh, I'm just a 73 and that person's a five, right? And, mm-hmm. and we don't, we can't see the rest of who we are anymore or who that person is, like the fullness of mm-hmm. our personhood, the fullness of the relationship. And so part of the quantification, um, it, it all fits in this larger context, as you mentioned, in the industrialization of us. And what I mean by that is the way in which our social media platforms are really mainly interested in keeping us there, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They wanna keep us there, as many people there as possible and engaging as much as possible, right? And the numbers help. Right, because they know we're we're just like, oh, we want the numbers, right? We're gonna work hard to get better numbers all the time. And so industrialization has this way of valuing the larger numbers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the more you can produce, the more you can sell, right? The better. Yeah. It does not matter whether it's a high quality tomato mm. or a well-made shirt, just crank them out, right? And sell them as fast as you can. Um, That's industrialization. And that's what's happening to us, I argue, when Mm. we start to rely on the numbers um, when we're on social media. Yeah. Wow. I I can't get that that word that you said, fullness of personhood out of my head. Mm. I feel like that's such a powerful and like real tangible thing to hold on to. And really this whole Mm. conversation is just making me think a lot about spiritual formation um, and Mm. kind of like the bringing in the gospel, but also just in in our formation in general. Like we're, um, as as believers or people of faith, we are, um, you know, we might have practices or habits to being Mm -hmm. formed um, to be more like Jesus, but then there's these outside kind of things that seem to be forming us into um, just, kind of what you're saying, like in industrialization and, and who they want us mm-hmm. to be or mm. become. Um, and so with this, this spiritual side and spiritual formation, I know you've uh, given a lot of time just considering the gospel and how um, the gospel can, can, can connect to our digital lives. Um, how, how can the good news of Jesus um, be, be in this, mm-hmm. be in our technology, technological lives and like, can it be redeemed? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so when I think of gospel, um, I like to think of it as not just the sort of straight um, salvation story gospel yeah, yeah. Um, that just many forensic, people kind yeah. of turn to. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about the afterlife, right? Yeah. Um, but it is the good news, mm-hmm. truly, right? For yeah. people who follow Jesus. And it is a good news that Um, gives us permission to actually be in our bodies, that gives us um, permission to inhabit time um, and not just be like running, 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 trying to get as much done as possible Mm -hmm. every single moment. Um, And it is ultimately a good news about how we were created and intended for communion, right? For relationship with God, first of all, but then also with others. Um, And that that is the bottom line, right? Like in the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Um, And so I think, that's why I think Christianity has a lot to offer to our digital plight, I would say, um, because so much of the exhaustion, so much of the overwhelm um, and frustration I think that people feel is rooted in this sense of, I can't keep up, right? Like mm-hmm. I just gotta, I gotta keep going. Like, and that's the only thing that counts, right? Um, and I mean, I, you know, I've been reading recently, I, I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit or it's just happening through media, <laughs> it's coming to me, but I'm reading article after article about loneliness. Yeah. Um, these studies about increasing loneliness, not just about among young people, but across the board, right? And I just think, oh man, there is something very real happening yeah. there in, in the way that it's intersecting with the ways that we're online, mm-hmm. right? Um, that we we are connecting and learning so much with reading different and hearing different content, but in ourselves, 
you know, in the end of the day, we're feeling lonely, yeah. right? And so yeah. many people felt that certainly during the pandemic, right. when we were kind of locked mm. down, right? Um, but I think what the good news of Jesus has to offer to us is this much bigger picture, right, about what our life is for mm -hmm. um, and where God actually does show up um, that can be super impactful. Yeah. Yeah. The, the word that you used in one of the chapters, I think, was attention. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and giving God attention versus being mm -hmm. our screen's attention. And mm -hmm. that, that to me was really beautiful. And, and what you just said about, you know, uh, that we can inhabit our bodies, inhabit our time. And the, the good news allows us to actually give attention to the things God wants us to give attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and I, mm -hmm. I think that's just such a p great, beautiful parallel between, you know, us looking at, you know, uh, the, the next Tom Cruise trailer that's coming out for <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> Go Gen Xers, Gen Xers. This is like the yes, best right. week. We got Jurassic Park and Top Gun. <laughs> this is our last, uh, our last f uh, battle. Um, but uh, and then and then you know and then actually giving attention to people and mm -hmm. you know you talked yeah. about um, having meals with people and looking at them in the eyes and and, and not looking at our phones. Um, so really, really wonderful. Um, that those chapters were great uh, in the book and and thank you for just even speaking into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do this 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 uh, project uh, homework assignment. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they, what they call it, but um, this freedom project you call it mm -hmm. uh, with your students at Westmont, where you um, it's a formational project, and you mm -hmm. you encourage them to kind of go on a journey with God uh, of mm -hmm. how to practically figure out how the Spirit can create some independence from uh, the digital and social media. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. uh, kind of share about the Freedom Project, and then for our listeners, yeah. like um, uh, the full the full project is mm -hmm. in the book, and you can read and get all mm -hmm. the instructions. But a little bit of some practical steps for them on how they could go on a journey with God and open their hearts up to 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 just being independent from this thing and opening up their attention to the right things. Yeah. Um, so it's called the Freedom Project, um, and this actually links up to the previous question because I think part of the gospel is that when we are in our bodies, in relationship, in communion, mm. we actually experience freedom, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's, um, it's not just good, but it is freeing to be wholly who you are fully like all the weaknesses all the flaws and to discover that you're still loved yeah. right even when you're all of that and so much of us know how that's not the case in social media mm -hmm. right or online like we're all kind of only showing parts of ourselves yeah. Yeah, it's so curated. right yeah 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 so i think wow. part of the freedom project is to say um while technology does offer us certain kinds of freedoms right? Freedoms from geography, freedoms from time constraints in lots of ways. Um, there is a other kind of freedom we need mm -hmm. that we long for, right? And that is to, to be free from um, other people's opinions of us, right? Like that, that we would not be burdened and oppressed by that, right? To be free, to yeah, be wow. fully just in who God has made us to be mm. and still discover ourselves to be loved. And so what and then ultimately to, as you've mentioned, Aaron, is to have a relationship with our devices that is characterized by freedom, mm. right? And it, I mean, I think about like even our best relationships with our loved ones or friends, right, family, the best ones are the ones where there is freedom, mm -hmm. right? Like, like we love spending time with them. We'd love to spend more time with them, right? But then it's the best ones are where there is freedom, right, to, to not be together yeah. every single moment, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and to not, right, I mean, there, it's, it's, I think there are interesting parallels to think that we all, I think, understand yeah. when we think about people and the kinds of loving, freeing relationships that we yeah. have. And I think it's the same thing with our technologies. There's a lot of positives, yeah. Yeah. right, that can come out of our uses, but those often roll into dependent, like weird sideways dependencies and compulsions, yeah. right? Just like relationships with people can get that way too, yep. yeah. right? And so it's the same thing. And so what the Freedom Project does is walk um, people through 
different stages. Um, and, and one of the things I like to say about the Freedom Project is it's not a plan. Like it's not a five day, 30 day plan that you just mm. do and it's pow, pow, pow and you're free. And it's not like that at yeah. all, <laughs> right? They are stages, they're called experiments actually. Yeah, that's right, yep. Um, because I think what's important is not necessarily the result Right. It's not to say, oh, by the time you finish this thing, you're going to be free from the digital. Right. It's not like that. It's more like after you're done with this, you should have a better awareness of what your habits are, mm. um, what you actually find helpful. Right. Um, in drawing certain boundaries. It's a lot of um, just experiments with what works in your life because we're all different, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. as people, we have different demands um, that require us to be online for different reasons. And so I didn't want to lay out some kind of prescription. Yeah. It's a bunch of experiments that starts actually with a fast. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the fast isn't to like free you from anything. The fast is to kind of raise a lot of awareness super yeah. fast yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on how much yeah. you are dependent, how much I am dependent, right, well, on our digital. I, I, I did a couple of them, a couple of the experiments. I love that word. And one of the ones that I liked the most was uh, you recommended before you pick up your phone to mm -hmm. pay attention to how your body feels. Mm -hmm. uh, I have I've listened to mm -hmm. a number of other, other Christian leaders uh, and other books um, on this topic. And no one has ever suggested that, that, that posture. Mm. Like what is, mm. what is, what is, what are you feeling in your gut, in your heart mm. right mm. before you pick this thing mm. up or you go to your screen? Mm -hmm. And, and that experiment was very mm. eye opening for me personally. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Oh, I I'm bored. Yeah. Oh, I'm anxious. Oh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm lonely. And mm -hmm. the, the, the boredom one, you talked about boredom and the boredom, mm -hmm. that, that, the section on boredom is just fantastic. Took me on a journey of like, oh, I need boredom. I was so good. <laughs> it's like, it, it just, you know, for anyone listening, the whole idea of boredom is that um, our brains are processing unconscious information from the day, experiences from the day. And, and we need that time to process essentially. And mm -hmm. if we don't have boredom in our life, then our brains are not actually functioning the way that they're supposed to. And, and that was really enlightening for me. But mm -hmm. the experiment of paying attention to your body was really good. Your personal mm -hmm. example about sending emails was very loving and thoughtful about prepping an email mm -hmm. before the night before so that your colleague doesn't get it that night and doesn't feel obligated to respond mm -hmm. at 12 p.m. or you know, 9 p.m. Um, so they get it in the next day. What are some other personal practices that you do that you have found mm -hmm. freeing for you? I love yeah. that email example. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us some, some insight into some of the ones that you have um, kind of embraced? Yeah, so I, I'm a really um, kind of spatially attuned person. Uh -huh. So when my phone is in the room or on my desk, like I just know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> like I might not be yeah. looking at it, but I know it's there. It's like right there. Right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so like at night, um, I actually charge my phone on the opposite side of the house, okay. right? Like it has to be literally on the opposite <laughs> yeah. side yeah. for me to feel some relief. Um, and I actually power it off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I do have a landline, which I pay uh, an enormous fee for, wow. but, but it's, it's so that I can turn my cell phone off, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and feel like, okay, I'm done. Mm. Like I, that, that is done. Right. Um, yeah. and so, so spatially, I've really appreciated having that distance, like a physical distance from my devices. I try to keep my laptop and other things out of my bedroom when I go to bed. Um, I also have started, what I really enjoy is I started with 15 minutes in the morning, not looking at any device after I wake up, but just making my tea, mm. reading scripture, right? Doing yoga, right? Whatever. Um, looking outside actually, right? Mm. Instead of just like going straight. And that's been super transformative actually, right? To not have those, that flood of, stimulus and anxiety and demands wow. just come at me mm -hmm. um, during that that first 15 minutes and I do that at the end of the day too like mm -hmm. no email like <laughs> half an hour before I go to bed like don't don't even look at it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, I and and so it's just then I can actually rest 
-hmm. right? And I'm not cogitating (laughs) over something. Um, the last thing I'll mention that, that I always like to mention, um, but I always feel kind of bad because it, it impinges on things like this is, um, monotasking, um, uh, monotasking mm. is, is trying to just do one thing. Yeah. Um, and there was a season in which things were super busy and I started monotasking in the car. That is when I drove, I just drove, I stopped listening to podcasts, which you know, podcasts like this are great. Um, And we should still listen to them. Um, But there are times, right, right, when we're driving, that maybe we should turn everything off and just drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And in the beginning, it was really scary for me, actually, Mm -hmm. like I was terrified of the Mm -hmm. silence, the complete silence. Um, But through regular practice, it actually became very peaceful. um, And a real refuge. Um, mm-hmm. in my day, even if it was just 10 minutes to get from one place to another. Um, so they're just different things. Um, yeah. I think people can try. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think, um, like I'm sure a lot of people have probably felt that way when they make a shift mm-hmm. and they're like, Oh, what mm-hmm. is this? Like, what is this silence? <laughs> you know, like what is <laughs> like my brain is having like thoughts. Cause I know it's yeah. so easy <laughs> yeah. to right. just like write what Aaron was saying in those times of I'm bored, mm-hmm. I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm hungry. Like we just go to our phones. <laughs> Um, I know for me, one of the biggest things I did similar um, to you, Felicia, is I charged my phone in the other side of the uh, house and I bought an Alexa so I could have an alarm clock and it changed (laughs) everything Mm -hmm. because I'm like, okay, I needed my phone for an alarm. So I just bought an alarm. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it really, really changed and like really like my whole nighttime, Mm -hmm. like sleep better. Like it's really crazy what these small changes can do. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm curious to just um, like what... I guess, would you say to people that might be like in that, like maybe even some fear of like, they've been Mm -hmm. holding on to these as patterns. Like what, what Mm -hmm. encouragement would you have for them? Mm. Yeah, I would say um, start really small Mm. and tell yourself, like give yourself a set, like a, you know, it's like exercises, reps that you make, right? So Mm -hmm. it's just like, I'm just, going to try this thing for three days yeah, or three times, super small. And I think um, my encouragement again is that you're not trying to succeed, mm-hmm. right? Like I think a lot of people fear that they're going to fail, yeah, right? Um, and it's like, it's not about that. Like I tell my right. students and even when they do the fast, I'm like, I don't even care if you can't pull it off. Right. The point is just to notice Mm -hmm. and feel that discomfort just a little bit. Right. And like if you have things you need to do because you just have to get on the phone, then get on. You know, like I don't Mm -hmm. need you to like go into crisis mode. (laughs) Right. But we do need to move into that discomfort just a little bit. Right. And to ask those questions like Aaron was saying. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, what is this about? Right. Like because I'm. You know, especially f- a lot of my students, they struggle with mental health uh. issues. And so like being alone is genuinely scary. Yeah. Like right. to hear their own thoughts yeah. is genuinely scary. And I that's totally understandable, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, so maybe, maybe it's not complete silence. Maybe what you need is something else. Like maybe you need to go and be at a sunset, mm-hmm. right? And watch like, yeah. or maybe you need to be doing exercises, mm-hmm. sit-ups, or you need to be playing, mu- like playing music, not like listening, but like playing your guitar, yeah. right? Yeah. Or, or doing something kinetic, because mm-hmm. that's what helps you, yeah. right. right? So I think it's like it's whatever, that's where like we need to know ourselves mm-hmm. well enough to try different things to be like, hey, you know, that might be too much, just enough here to like experience the discomfort and gain some understanding of like, hey, what might work mm-hmm. yeah. better? Yeah doesn't rely on the tech so yeah, good so good so good um felicia y- this book is fantastic there is so much in it i'm probably gonna read it again this summer uh <laughs> restless devices um i'll close with this and then we'll let you go because you have a summer to live and enjoy <laughs> and have <laughs> after after uh the spring semester at westmont um but at the very end of the book you uh, do a couple of things you have a commitment like a little like um some some values of that that mm-hmm. you encourage people on digital to try to follow at before they post and what they think about when they post. And I found that to be really helpful. It was yeah called commitments to an ordered digital life. 
Um, and it, and it really gave some wonderful practical steps for people to think and be conscious of what am I posting? Why am I posting this? Why do I need this? And I found that very helpful. Um, you also mentioned that you send your students out on to grass, uh, sit on the grass at Westmont. Um, uh, and if you've never been to Westmont, it's like the greatest campus ever. <laughs> um, I grew up going to all the basketball games there. It's an awesome, awesome place. Um, but you, you ask the, the students these questions. What is my no noise? Why do I hurry? Mm -hmm. What crowds do I hide in? In my life, my top five distractions are and what would help me to change certain people, silence, space, or some kind of new teaching? Mm. And can you just comment as our last question here, when you ask students those to kind of ponder those questions, uh, what's their response when they come back uh, after doing that little simple <laughs> exercise? What do you see in mm -hmm. your students as they return from that time? Yeah, um, they are often very calm mm. um, and some of them are a little teary-eyed <laughs> um, because they've they say I haven't stopped mm. like for those 15 minutes like I just haven't um, thank you for that time <laughs> you know that you you gave us wow. and and um, I think it's uh, always um, I don't know. It's I always find it incredibly powerful when they come back, mm -hmm. um, because they're all just um, amazed by, um, like they've just come down, mm. um, and and I try to re tell them, and and if you look at the clock, you'll see that was fifteen minutes. Like you can do fifteen minutes. Right, like this is very yeah. doable yeah. for us, and so, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a wonderful part of the semester. I always look forward to doing yeah. that day. Um, yeah. To be, yeah, just to encourage you that those mm -hmm. four or five questions have impacted me so much. We're actually taking our church as a new church plant. We have a, mm -hmm. a formational uh, half day of solitude retreat in the mountains mm -hmm. here locally uh, in a couple weeks. And those four questions are actually at the heart of beginning of the solitude mm. time for people. Mm. And, mm. and so thank nice. you for, for putting that together. Yeah. And thank you for writing this uh, fantastic book. Mm -hmm. um, and just for joining us today. This has been yeah. such a pleasure. Yeah, it's been so refreshing too. Like yeah. just such a like rejuvenating conversation about this. Mm. I want to get a landline now as well. That's you've inspired <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm like, it's I an need a landline. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going by post mail only. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. We're like, no, for real. I, I'm like wondering like how much does it cost to get a landline? Cause I want one. <laughs> yeah, so good. That's my takeaway. Um, seriously, Felicia, thank you for your time today and for joining us on the podcast. It's such a good time to be together. Um, yeah, it's been so good. So the book is Restless Devices by Felicia Wu Song, uh, Recovering Personhood, Presence and Place in the Digital Age. And we encourage you to pick it up this summer. It's wonderful. Um, and so thank you again, Felicia, for being with us today on another episode of the Resilient Christian Podcast. Uh, wherever you're listening from, thank you for taking time. And we hope that this will lead you into a calmer, peaceful place with Jesus. Uh, God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.